Hey guys, in this video we're going to build the drilling and tapping project. Um, you should know how to use all of these tools individually based off the other videos and other trainings. Um, but I want to go ahead and I'm going to run through each of the steps so that way you can get more of a workflow idea. Remember, all of this is going to be graded based on how close the blueprint is or how close your part is to the blueprint. So, pay Spend some extra time, make sure it's all laid out correctly, all the sizes are perfect before you move on to the next step. That way you're not wasting your own time. So like I said, this is more of a workflow video. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my, my raw metal and I'm gonna cut it down to the correct sizes. I'm gonna use the bandsaw, you can use whatever tool you like. I would highly recommend the bandsaw. It'll probably be the quickest, fastest way possible. Um, after that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna touch it up, grind, or either with a grinder, a file, just to get the edges down nice. Um, after that, I'm going to use a tri-square and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lay out all the bolt holes. I'm going to go center punch them. I'm going to go drill them. I'm going to drill them to the right size. I might pilot drill them first and then drill them to the correct size. And then I'm going to tap all of those holes. So sounds pretty simple. Like I said, sit back, relax. I'm going to walk you through the whole process. Okay, first things first, I'm going to cut the 45 on that plate first, mainly because if I cut the 45, then I can measure off the tip of the 45 back to the, the 90 degree section that I need to cut. It's a lot easier to measure off that 90 degree cut rather than that 45. So I cut my 45 first, then I determine how much longer it needs to be to cut my, my next cut. So remember, you gotta take this knob here, loosen it up, about, about that much. I like to do this with the bandsaw blade in the up position, and you're just gonna go ahead and either push it or pull it. This is a rule right here to figure out how many degrees you wanna cut. I'm gonna take it to the 45 degrees. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna re-tighten that down. And I'm all ready to cut my 45. Okay, so I'm like over here, I got my 45 cut. So now I'm just gonna measure back the four inches to make my next cut. Now remember, this blueprint print could change, so do not follow my measurements 100%. Make sure you're checking that blueprint and you're getting that figured out correctly, okay? Like I said, projects change over time. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take my square, and I'm gonna come up here and I'm just gonna measure from the edge, the very tippy edge here, to that four inch. And then if I would like, I'm gonna take and I'm gonna take my square. Oops, I'm having some problems with the camera here in the way. I'm gonna go from one side to the other, off that line, and draw it, okay? Now, I could also put this thing in the bandsaw and measure from the blade to this tip over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do it. I'm actually gonna do it that way. I'll try to show it for you guys. That way you can uh, do that if you'd like. Now, on the next step, I'm gonna go ahead and I wanna dress all of those edges up. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna use a file. You could potentially use a grinder. Be very careful with the grinder that you're not actually changing the shape of your part. Um, you know, you could take a, a nice square cut and actually change that angle if you get too aggressive with your grinder. So be very careful, try to let the, the, the bandsaw do the work of cutting, and then you're really just cleaning it up with a file or some sandpaper or something like that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take a C-clamp. I'm gonna C-clamp this down to the table. That way I can get on it with the file. You're more than welcome to go and put this thing into the, the vise if you'd like. It's just a little bit harder for me to use the camera and all that. So you're actually gonna see, it's actually a little bit more difficult to use the C-clamp, but that's what I'm gonna do for now. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over the drawing with you and then we're gonna transfer that all to this little part. We're gonna center punch it and go about drilling it. Okay, so now I've got all the burrs off and there's no way I'm gonna get cut or anything like that from this part now. I'm ready to move on to the layout stage. So let's go ahead and let's go over uh, those blueprints and then let's start transferring it over here. Um, I probably will just use a soapstone, lay it out nice, nice clean lines as best I can, okay? Let's go over those blueprints and then let's move on. Okay, so I have my blueprints here and let's go, we're just gonna quickly go over those. Um, first thing I wanna point out is that all of these bolt sizes or these thread sizes that you're gonna be needing to use are different. 
you can see that this one's a quarter and this one's a quarter but this is a quarter by 20 and this one's a quarter by 28 so make sure you pay attention to how many threads per inch because this could really mess you up mainly because you need to make sure that you're using the correct drill bit sizes and those change based on how many threads per inch you have next I'm going to start looking at how far from the edges this this hole needs to be so you can see this one's half inch up and half inch over from the side to drill this now you notice this one up here has no dimensions that, that's because it's a direct match to this one from the opposite side so it's gonna be a half inch over from from up here and a half inch over from this side over to the center of that hole I can see that I got one inch here I got three quarters here I can see that I have a I have all three of these are going to be in line for three quarters of an inch I've got my eighth inch based off of this corner up here so it's gonna be down and over and then I've got one inch increments for each one of these bolt holes okay so if I look you can kind of compare my drawing here to my part it's quite a bit different we got some different uh, measurements didn't think this was gonna be quite that small so let's go ahead and we're gonna start uh, laying this part out okay so the first ones that I would like to knock out are gonna be the half inch ones that are kind of down here in this corner and up here in this corner so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set my tri square to the half inch but I'm not going to set it right on the half inch. I'm going to maybe go in an extra 30 second of an inch just to make sure that the thickness of the lines don't come into play. The thickness of the lines is something that is important with soapstone. Um, like, like I said, if you want to use a scribe, it's pretty, you're going to get a much better setup, um, the scribe and the bluing die. But for the sake of the camera mess and all that, I'm going to use a soapstone. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this, press it up against the back of my part so it's nice in there. Draw a half inch line. Flip it over, half inch line. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna knock out both of these half inches at the same time, okay? All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna center punch those ones. That way I don't rub them off or anything like that um, while I'm making the rest of my measurements. All right, so now I'm gonna lay out my three quarters over, one inch down hole. Let's go ahead and get that going. So we're gonna go over to three quarters. Set the thing to three quarters. Grab my soapstone again. I'm kind of estimating where the one inch will come down. Change it to, change my tri-square to one inch. Go a little bit shy of it. I'm gonna go ahead and center punch this one too, that way I don't have any problems. So my, my camera died while I was laying out these holes, so I just wanna quickly walk you through that. That way you're not, you're uh, able to do that. This will be probably the hardest part. So I'm gonna set this to a half inch because it's, remember it's a half inch from this side over that we're gonna be putting these holes. I'm gonna put it to here on this 45 and I'm gonna draw a line all the way down. So I'll quickly do that. So we'll do one line here. Oops. If I wanted to, I could extend it all the way down just so I get a line all the way across to where I want those bolt holes. And then I'm going to extend this out a little bit. I'm gonna line this up with this corner as best as I can. See this corner down here? I'm gonna draw my line right there. So now I'm gonna measure off of that line. Probably will take a, I probably will use a smaller ruler for this, but I'm gonna measure off of that line up here down to my first hole. From that first hole, then I'm gonna start laying out my other holes. All right, sorry about the, the camera snafu here. Um, next, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna go ahead and drill all these out um, and we're good to go.
Now I have my part and all the holes are drilled. One thing I wanna point out is that I had all my drill bits ready to go. So this only took me about eight minutes. I'm doing the same thing with my taps. I've got all the sizes I need. I got my tap handle, I got my oil ready. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna throw it in this vise and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tap all these holes. When you do the six by 32, you may need to go get the uh, smaller tap handle. It should be over located over there in the machine shop. Also, make sure to take the time to deburr your holes before and after you're done tapping them. It takes just a couple seconds and it makes it so that nobody can get hurt. All right, finally, just make sure to clean out all the threads, make sure that the bolts fit nice into every single one of these, and then turn it in for grading to this instructor.